coming up in today's video is gonna be crazy guys have a look at this that's why i've got my gloves like and like i'm pulling it it's solid steve what you reckon you're gonna find under here <laughs> ah, wow that should be priming uh, wow so guys you all wanted something different from salvage nation well it doesn't get any more different than this when you see this car or shall I say, when you see the state of this car, you will be shocked. Do you think I've bitten off more than I can chew? Have a look at the video, watch it to the end, and tell me what you think in the comments down below. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a very special episode and a very special build from Salvage Nation. Normally I've got very modern cars, I've got supercars and I've got a lot of performance cars. But as you can see behind me, this build is a classic. And when I say classic, I mean classic. As you can see, I'm wearing my gloves because it's not in a good way and we're gonna be walking around the car and in this episode, I want to try to get this car running. Before we get onto that, let me give you a bit of history about this classic Mini Cooper, which is on the 1995 plate. And if you're wondering, D, why are you wasting your time? Guys, I've seen one of these go for 30K recently. And when I tell you how much I picked this one up for, and as long as I can do a good job to restore it, I should be in the money. And after all, that's the name of the game, Cash is King. We'll get into that later. Let me show you the car and give you a little history tour. Now this is a 1995 Rover Mini, the original Mini. But what makes this special is this is a Mini Cooper, which has tons of added extras over the standard model. As it's a 1995 model, this is the first time that Rover had shifted away from the carburetor engine. And this is running one of the early generation of fuel injection engines, which we can find in all of today's modern cars. Now at some point, this particular car was someone's pride and joy, until sadly that person passed away and it sat in a barn for up to 15 years. The widow of that person stuck the car on eBay I went down to see it and I thought it would be something interesting for the channel so I picked it up and as you can see here I got tons of documentation with this car and I'll explain a little bit more as the video goes on. So guys you've just seen the slow motion shots, the car is not in a good way but over the next few weeks or maybe months, I don't even know how long it's going to take, we're going to be sorting this out and I want to start right now by doing a full walk around of the car. I want to see exactly what's wrong and you're going to be seeing it for the first time like me. Then I'm going to make a parts list and we're going to be checking the three things which an engine needs to run air, fuel, and spark. If I can get those three things ready, the car should be running. I picked this car up for literally just over a grand. Like, that is an absolute steal. And if I can, yeah, like I said earlier, if I can bring it together, there's serious money to be made. Have a look at all the documentation. There's so many documents that came with the car and it's got all the keys. It's actually got two keys. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy. But guys, have a look at this. That's why I've got my gloves. Like, look at all, what? Look, I don't even want to touch that. Um, there's no battery in the car at the moment, so I haven't even tested to see if anything works. So we're going to be doing that together. Coming into the engine bay, now have a look. The engine looks pretty bad. It's very, very badly rusted. Um, it's got the twin fans. Apparently, this is a special kind of, I don't know, special edition. It's got the twin fans. Um, have a look at this radiator. Oh my God, like, take a look in there. Like everything is just dried and rusted out. But I did have a look in here and have a look inside the engine. Now, outside looks all dry and crusty, but inside looks pretty okay. I was told that it was running and driving before it was parked up. So yeah, if I can just dissect it, and get it running, 
I'll be happy. And then we'll be dropping the engine, doing the full engine rebuild. I'll be powder coating the engine and there's some other bits and bobs. Now the earlier versions of this car used to have a carburetor. This is very, very rare. This is the first model, the first year that they switched over to injection. So have a look right there. It's an injection based engine and it's got a little engine ECU right there. I did a bit of research and this should be one of these plugs, either this one, or what's this back here? I think this is the one. If I take this cap off, one of these, there's a little plug in here that should be a diagnostic port. So I will be looking into that later on in the build. So I'll just leave that all there for now. Coming around to the passenger side, have a look at the light. The light is horrible, but I'm sure, like literally, I want to restore this to the original version. I've had a lot of people on Instagram saying I should put a motorbike engine in it. I'm not going to be doing that. Have a look at this wing. Do you think this is salvageable, guys? Do you think we can repair that? Let me know what you think. Pretty solid, a little bit of super glue, a little bit of body filler. Um, but have a look at these wheels. These are original Mini Cooper wheels. I was told that these wheels are very, very special indeed. The suspension in there has perished. Have a look at all of that. It's just crumbling everywhere. It's literally just rusted out. Rust, rust, rust. So like, this car has been savaged by rust and it's all crumbling. Do you think we can fix this door? Now at the top of the door feels very solid, but once again, the bottom of the door, there's tons of rust in there. Also, there's a lot of work on this build. That door is locked. The rear panel, once again, rust along the bottom, but the top section feels pretty okay. And there's a little rust spot right there. Have a look at the Mini Cooper badge on the rear quarter as well. Now, ooh, how, how? Just nick my hand, even though I'm wearing gloves. Just nicked my hand on this rust. Look at all of that. Crazy. So at the back, it's got these steely wheels, but I was told that the original alloy should be in the back seat. So we'll be checking that. Coming around to the rear, have a look at that reg. It's an in reg. Man, man oh man, tiny little exhaust. But once again, it's the same old story. More rust, more rust, more rust. It's a 1.3 SPI. Once again, super rare. Open up the boot, what's in here? So this is the fuel tank. You know, like on modern cars, the fuel tank is all hidden. You've got the nozzle right here and the fuel tank is right here. Nice and easy, nice and simple. It's missing a battery. I knew that, so I need to order a new battery for it. But I want to see if these lights are working. I want to see what the electronics are saying. And there's another, what's this? This is the windscreen. It's still got water in there. So close that. This is all functional. Coming around, more rust, more rust. Another steely. Interior, have a look at the seats. You've got ripped up seats there, stained seats there. And yeah, you can literally see right through the floorboard. Once again, more rust, more rust. Now look at all of these keys, guys. You've got a key for the ignition, a key for the door, a key for the fuel cap. There's like literally a key for everything. Now I wanna see, I don't even know how to make the seat go forward. Now, have a look in the back. You've got tons of bits in there. I think I can see one of the alloys down in the bottom, but there are tons of bits in the back seats, lots of spares, mats, everything should be in there. Even got a spare fuel tank right there, so nuts. So guys, now that I've given you a bit of a walk around, I'll stick you on the tripod over there. You can stay there. I'm gonna make a little parts list. I need to order a battery. There's an ignition cable that's missing. That goes on the power distributor right there. So I'm not getting any spark. Hopefully we can get it running. How crazy will it be? When I was removing it off the truck, um, we pushed it back, pushed it back. I tested the brakes, they were working. And when it got to the slope and it got really fast, I jammed on the brakes and something went. So I reckon that the brake lines are gonna be all rusted out as well. The amount of rust that's on this car, as soon as I pressed the brakes really hard, it was holding for like two seconds and then it just went really soft. And then I saw lots of oil on the floor. But let me get those parts, get a battery on the car, get some power in the system. I wanna see if it's gonna crank. I wanna see if, like little things. I wanna see if the lights are working. I wanna see if the wipers are working. And then we're gonna be dissecting everything on the engine and trying to get the car to run. So I'll see you in a minute once those parts come in. 
All right, guys, so I've made a few orders. Forgive me, I'm not sure. I'm out of my depth, but I'm gonna make it work. Isn't it, Steve? And <laughs> me and Steve are just looking at the engine. I've just seen the throttle cable here in the back and like, I'm pulling it, it's solid. Check it out. So that's the throttle wire right there, right? That I can see is linked. So that's the tip of the wire in there, right there. When I pull that wire, that's meant to be flexing and it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check for air. The air filter is meant to be in there. I wanna see if there's anything that's blocking the air from going into the engine. If I can get this off, I'll get a better look at the throttle wire down there as well. The space is there. So I'm not very hopeful that these screws are gonna move and I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to drill them out because they are, yep. But every time I try to turn, all rusted. Come on. One. Steve, what do you reckon you're gonna find under here? All right. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually okay. Oh, I did not expect to see that. Tried to get some WD-40 in there. Let me get you guys a bit closer. So have a look in there, guys. It's a bit dry and it's got all this residue, but it should be all right. So have a look at that. That's cleaned up quite nicely. I'll let that sit for a bit. So whilst I was doing that, my guy Steve over here was getting ready with some fuel in the tank. Now I've got a feeling that the, it's been sat for so long. I've got a feeling that the fuel pump may have perished as well. So I've, <laughs> I've not got a lot of confidence in this. Here goes the fuel. The battery is on its way from a company called Guy & Spare over in Littlehampton. But this is what I'm worried about. Down here is meant to be moving freely. Steve, look at this and it's not. All of that area is meant to be moving freely. Yeah, so I'll just let it soak for a bit and hopefully that loosens everything up and I'll report back. Something's holding it. I hope that the electrics are working. And you can see it's got a little actuator arm. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> everything is just completely solid. Why did I buy this one, eh? I love a headache. Guys, have you not noticed that? All my builds, I love a headache. But it feels so much nicer when you can crack it. Hey, Steve. You've put the fuel. We've got air going in now because that's working, that's opening. We just need to check for sparks. So it's about 15 minutes later, the guys from Guy & Spare just left. So right here, that's the lead that we were missing. I'm gonna connect this patch lead now and I wanna check to see if there's spark. So we know there's air. I've filled up the tank with fuel. If I've got those three things, the car should start. So that goes in like so. And that goes on the top of the distributor like that. And that's what's gonna give the spark to those spark plugs. So I'll just choose one at random, pull that off. Need to get that out. Actually, before I do all of that. <clears throat> ah, guys, look at that. Fancy a bit of oil, love? I need to give it oil. I don't even want to crank it with no oil. Guys, Steve, tell them what you just saw. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to trust it out there. Oh man, guys, look at, oh, wow. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, is it gonna cave in and fall off the bloody ramp? But anyway. Guys, look at the size, ow. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of, the, that's the gearbox, isn't it? Tiny little gearbox on the back here, because these are the linkages. Look, where's the oil sump plug? Spot on. So, let's open this up and see if there's any oil in the engine. I can't see any other plug, so I'm assuming that's the only one that must be it. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> wow. <coughs> <laughs> it's probably not come off in over 20 years. Let's see, is there anything in there? Oh, it's actually got oil. 
It's just not got enough and it's filthy. Actually, the oil doesn't, doesn't look that bad. <laughs> Plenty in there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a service anyway. I'm just going to top it up. Yeah, it needs, a, it needs more than a service. <laughs> so yeah, guys, there's plenty of oil in the engine. I'm going to change it at a later date. The engine's coming out. It's getting a full rebuild anyway, so I'm not really too fussed about wasting whatever is in there. I'm going to top it back up with a little bit more and see what we can come up with. All right, guys, so in goes the new battery. This is actually worrying time. Oh, 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 what's that, what's that, what's that? Why is it bibbing? What? Why is it doing that? You muppet. Steve, you got the bloody thing back to front. Oh, you got it back to, guys, he's got it back to front. <laughs> this guy. That's why I checked it. That's probably why it's bibbing. Don't put that in. Yeah, now it's, it's not bibbing now. Oh, no. What are you doing? Testing you. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we get some sort of lights. Yep, 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 can you see that? I see lights, I see lights. I see lights. I can hear noise. No way. <laughs> it's the little things, you know? So guys, we've got power. This is working. Have a look at that. But the main thing is, is it cranking? That's the thing. Is it gonna crank? Guys, it's cranking. So it is turning over, which is a good thing. And I was told it was turning over. All right, I lost my chain of thought. We need to check for crank, not crank. <laughs> we need to check for spark. Let me put this down. I'm focusing on camera work. I got a feeling we'll have spark. And I feel like it's gonna be no fuel because the fuel pump's got lots of rubbers and stuff in there. Guys, what do you think is gonna be the problem? At least the spark plugs aren't seized in. That just open up really easily. So spark plugs are not wet. They're not too covered in carbon. That looks all right. Steve, do me a favor, please. Give me a crank. Go on, mate. Yeah, we got spark. We got spark. So that patch lead is working. Distributor is working. We've got spark. So that's two of the three. We've got air and we've got spark. You should be, I was told that you should hear the fuel pump prime. Right here, I can see an arrow pointing in and I can see an arrow pointing out. So I'm gonna remove the one that's pointing in. That should be from the fuel tank in the back. Let's see if it's actually delivering any fuel. Is this even gonna move? Ah. So I've got another problem, it's not swiveling. I don't want to break it. So let's see if I can take it off from another point. I'll salt that, hopefully, with some penetrating oil and let that do its thing. There's another spot here that I can remove it from. So guys, that's the fuel line. Let's see if it works. So that should be spitting fuel as soon as we crank. So I think that's the problem. We've got air, we've got spark, no fuel. We need to head to the back and we need to double check why there's no fuel. So guys, I'm just gonna remove this. I wanna see if there's power coming to that fuel pump. Move that back. It's literally so hard to get into these different compartments because there's a different key for everything. Oh, not too bad. Okay, so it was caught on something else. Good old plus and negative. My little probe here should be able to tell me. Okay, let's see what we got. It's 
I've got negative on one side, negative on the other side. So I'm giving it 12 volts on the positive wire that should be priming. All right, guys, looks like I'm going to have to open up the fuel tank, get that pump out of there. I want to have a look at that pump. That's what happens when everything's just sat for years and years. So guys, with all the time and, you know, I knew I was buying something really old and abandoned and deprived. So I actually went ahead and I bought one of these and I've had it in a box for months, just sitting there until the time I make this video. So just bear with me one minute. Thanks to good old minisport.com. So I'm hoping that this is the correct one because I know there are many different types. if that makes any noise. Yep. Did you guys just hear that? All right, you guys, so fuel tank back in, fuel pump is installed. I've connected up the hoses. Let's go give it a few cranks and see if we're getting fuel at the front. Yep, 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 yep. what's going on, what's going on? Yes. All right, you guys, 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 we've got fuel, we've got air, and we've got spark. I'm gonna top this up with oil, and this little mini classic should be starting for the first time on the channel. Gassed. I don't know why I'm so excited with this old car, but I just like overcoming obstacles. It's just one of those things. Come on, come on, come on. Do you think it's gonna start? Uh -oh. Guys, almost first time. Hold on, let me get you a better view. Guys, it almost done it, it almost did it. Come on, come on. Man, that thing sounds clean. It sounds clean. Hold on, hold on. Guys, I'm so, so gassed. Oh, man. Let's see if everything's functional. Uh oh, I can hear something down below now. Yeah, something is leaking. I think it's the water pump. All right, start her up. Man. Guys, that thing, it sounds so clean. I, was, I expected it to be like running rough. It sounds really, really good. So I'll have a look down there. It's definitely leaking from the water pump. I'm assuming that this is the water pump. But guys, this little thing is running. Something's worked. Oh my God, even the, yeah, it's working. It's blowing out air. So when I press the gas, yeah. Something's wrong with that lever. If anyone's watching and you know, look, this is meant to return back to the closed position. I don't know if there's an internal spring, but if anyone knows, do let me know. 
So guys, there you have it, man. Listen, I am actually over the moon. I didn't expect this thing to fire up, but it's getting late now. I've got a massive water leak. I've got a lot of smoke coming from this area here. So it's getting late, I'm gonna pack up. I'll come back in in the morning. I'll jack it up, I'll investigate all of that. Make sure that all the lubricants are lubricating. And yeah, I wanna see if it's actually gonna drive. So maybe tomorrow I'll give it a little rip and see if the little mini's driving. So I'll see you in the morning. All right, you guys, good morning. I've just come in and I went to sleep thinking about this little mini because today, in this episode, right here, right now, I think it would be crazy to see this little thing driving and yeah, do you think I could fit in? But before we can think about all of that, I need to figure out why it's leaking water, so let's roll on. So guys, right underneath the engine here, I can see a little rubber bomb. It's like, it's got a nipple off the engine and it's just a rubber bomb that's on the top and it's got a Jubilee clip. I can see that Jubilee clip is completely rusted off and the rubber bomb's got a big hole in it. And when you put water in it, I can see that's where all the water is coming up from. Like, you're not gonna be able to see it in there, but that's where it's coming from. So I'm gonna try with that first. See if I can get a matching rubber bomb, replace the Jubilee clip, cutting that all off. I've seen the water leaking from there, so that's where we're gonna start. gauge is actually working, I don't know if you can see that. The car's running really nicely. However, I've got a problem where when I press the clutch, it's rock solid. So I really wanted to drive it. I've just tried to, you saw the wheels spinning earlier. That's with no clutch action. I've just literally pulled the gear stick. And it is trying to engage, but there's no clutch. And um, it's rock solid. So I don't know if that's got something to do with the brake system and the oil, etc., etc. But I really wanted to take it for a little drive in this episode, but I don't think I'll be able to. I'll get the car down, we're gonna push it outside, and I wanna go into the boot and see what's hiding underneath all that rubbish. So guys, we got the car outside and I'm still gutted about the clutch. However, I found all of these lovely goodies stuck in the back seat. The seller did say it came with some extras, but look at the bonnet, the classic badges, the fog lights, they all work. The electronics on this car are still good. And here's that little Mini Cooper badge. Do you think I should restore this to its original state or do something crazy with it? Speaking of crazy, have a look at this. Not only have I got a brake issue, I've now got a massive fuel leak. Like, it's in a bad way, so this is where I'm gonna end the video. So guys, there you have it. That's it for episode one on the lovely little Mini. It doesn't look lovely now, but if I can sort this out, this car should bring in well over 20 grand. It's a classic, and I hope that you guys are gonna stay around for it. And if you wanna see how we get on, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This is where we're gonna head off. In episode two, I'm gonna pick up exactly where we left off. I should have some help. I'm gonna get a few professionals who actually know what they're doing with these type of cars, and we're hopefully gonna get this car running and hopefully get it driving. That is the plan for the next episode. So subscribe, make sure your bells are on, and I'll see you then. Coming up in episode two, I've got an expert on classic car rebuilds. He's come all the way down from specialized engineering over in Essex. We're gonna be diving deeper into this little mini and hopefully we can get it driving. Let's see, come on. <laughs> oh. 